Hey gang, Tim here from Core Electronics, and today we're increasing our creative capacity tenfold. Today, we're gonna make our own Python functions. Progressing further into this epic programming language of Python, the instinctive next step will be user-defined functions. Now, as a quick refresher, a function in Python is a block of code which only runs when it's called, it is organized and reusable, and performs single related action. Functions are all about making it easier for the Pythonista, whilst increasing both the modularity and the reusability of the code. Leading on from that, a user-defined function is a programmed routine that is parameters set by the user of the system. So simply, a user-defined function would be a Python script that you've created, which can be called upon and run by different programs. User-defined functions can seem somewhat different for new programmers, particularly in the way they're called into action, but understand they're there to enable the best potential out of the Python programming language. The keyword def is the method Python uses to create user-defined functions. All user-defined functions begin with a def statement, followed by the function name. Let me give you a guide example of the syntax to produce a user-created function, which also uses the return keyword. This is another keyword that you will see regularly in regards to user-created functions. Down here, you will see a general form code of a user-created function made in the Python programming window. So what you can see here, def, the keyword, name, this is the name of the function, and the parameters that this function will take. Then the block of code, which will normally use the parameters in some certain way, calculations or other functions, and then return. This return will give back some kind of information to the calling environment. So let me demonstrate a really, really simple user-created function called repeat. So I'm gonna type repeat here. This I'm gonna refer to as text. Inside the body will be print text. And then with the right indentation, it will be return. So if I run this now, you'll see nothing has happened, but that's because it's running now in this calling environment. The calling environment in this case is the idle Python shell. So if I type in repeat, notice that it says text. Hello to you. And then run it. This is called this function. So we jump down here, it's gone print text. The text in this case is hello to you. And then this hello to you has been printed to the calling environment, the Python idle shell back. And we can do it any number of different ways. Whatever parameter we give. Hello. It will respond back to us. So at this point, I'll dive into exactly what the return statement is used for in created functions. Simply, the return keyword when executed will return something such as a numeric value to the calling environment. Also, this keyword can be used only inside functions and will terminate the function as soon as it's executed. Other things worth noting, every function in Python returns something. If there's no return statement in a function, it will return to the calling environment the keyword none. Multiple return statements can be utilized within a function, but as soon as any are executed, the function terminates. And finally, when there is an expression, ergo a mathematical calculation inside a return statement, this expression is first to be executed. Now, let me demonstrate to you a number of other user created functions. On the screen to the right is a function that will perform an average of four given parameters. The addition is done inside the function and the division is done inside the print function. The function produces integer, string and float values to the calling environment. So I'm gonna run this function that I've created. So now it's running in the back of the Python idle shell. So if I type average, calling this function that I've created, 
give it some numbers. Finish the bracket, press play. Now the function has been called. It produces the same numbers that I typed in and it also gives the average, which in this case is 15. The next user creative function that we're gonna check out is inside the computer screen. And this is a function that will give a greeting and then give a statement about the weather. This demonstrates a great potential of functions. Imagine there were lots of people to say hello to and also to tell what the weather was. These people could be in a list and the user created Python function would then be able to run through and give everyone a personalized greeting message. This would save so much more time than manually doing it. Furthermore, imagine if the Python function would access information on that person's location and the local weather for that day. Then this whole system could be completely automated. This function is a simplification as this guide is only an introduction to user created functions, but it also shows different ways to get parameters and strings to be printed together to the calling environment. So let me run it and then we'll use the idle shell to call the function to it. So now the function's running in the background. Calling the function by using its name. My name is Tim. And thankfully today, the weather is really sunny. Morning Tim, we're gonna have a sunny day today. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? I think that's pretty neat. Isn't that pretty neat? Finally, on the screen is a script which emulates a timer for a rocket to blast off. The timer's starting point is based on the parameter which you give it to start off with. A while loop is incorporated into the function as well. Indentation is increased a further step for all code inside the loop body. And worth noting, nested loops can work perfectly fine inside user created functions. It just requires further steps of indentation. So let me run the code to the idle shell to call this function to it. Type in the name of the function and let's say in six seconds. Countdown will commence. Six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. And that's it for today's session. So hopefully you feel excited to make your own fun chins. And until next time, stay cozy.